Good morning. Welcome to the October 25th, 2021 meeting of the Rutherford County Regional Planning Commission. If you will stand with us, please. Commissioner Craig Lynch will lead us in our prayer and our pledge. Craig. allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, the public for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. Thank you. You may be seated. Call the roll, please, Gail. Charlotte P. Chip Pinion. Craig Lynch. David Jones, yeah. Jim Averwater, Lee Bogle, Here. Marvin Whitworth, Here. Mike Cush, Pettis Reed, Here. Rhonda Allen, Jeff Phillips. Present. We have a quorum. Thank you, Gail. Uh, we have no minutes to approve today. We also have uh, no items that have been deferred or withdrawn, so we'll get right into our new business. I'll make a request this morning if you will speak louder than normal into your microphones. Uh, we have some audio problems, uh, so speak loud and clear. Those audio problems relate to me because I forgot my hearing aids this morning, so speak up. Uh, Item six, under new business, we have one item uh, that's been submitted for a preliminary plan approval, 6A1. Item number is 21-1013, Fox Cramp Camp Retreat, 77 lots on 122 plus acres, zone PUD, located along Bradyville Pike. Swanson Development is the applicant. Doug? Yes, sir, thank you. Uh, and good morning, everyone, on this rainy Monday morning. Uh, this property looks familiar, I'm sure, to the Planning Commission. This was something that was considered a little earlier uh, this year. Uh, this was actually zoned plan development back at the Board of Commissioners August 12th, 2021 meeting. Uh, this development will consist of both single family and townhome elements. Uh, this is only, what you're seeing here is only for the single family. The townhome element will be submitted under a separate site plan submittal. Uh, right turn lanes were one of the requirements of this a particular plan development. Uh, they are shown on the preliminary plan. Ha however, of course, if this is approved, then the uh, particulars will be fleshed out during the uh, construction drawings, but those are being shown on there. Uh, pretty much most of our comments have been addressed. Uh, there may be a few tweaks needed during a construction plan phase, <laughs> but as far as the preliminary plan itself, this is in pretty good shape. So uh, with that, we'll be happy to answer any questions. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, seeing that uh, both the turn lanes have been addressed, I would uh, make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the preliminary plan for Fox Camp Retreat, item 21-1013. Any questions or comments? All those in favor of the motion to approve, please say aye. aye. Any opposition? Motion to approve carries. Thank you. Item 6B, uh, we have 10 items that have been submitted for final plat approval. 6B1, the item number is 18-2090, Richmond's Retreat, Section 4. This is a reapproval, 19 lots on 6-plus acres zoned RM with a previously approved CUP located along Richmond 
Retreat Boulevard. KW Group is the applicant. Doug? Yes, sir. Thank you. As you state, we do have several final plats on the agenda, but hopefully uh, we will get through these in, in pretty quick order. Uh, this first plat being Richmond's Retreat Section 4. Again, this is a reapproval. Uh, this was last approved by the Planning Commission back in September of 2020. Uh, it's been over a year since that approval date, so the plat does need to be reapproved. Uh, the applicant has received approval from TDOT to expand the median cut along Shelbyville Pike to accommodate better traffic flow into and out of the development, particularly heading north uh, back toward Murfreesboro. Uh, staff has agreed to release most of the lots in here, but the balance of the lots will not be released until those improvements have been completed to that median. Uh, but with that, the plat's in good order, and we'd be happy to answer any questions. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I'd like a motion to approve. We have a motion and a second to approve item 18-2090, Richmond's Retreat, Section 4. Other questions or comments? All those in favor of the motion to approve, please say aye. aye. Any opposition? Motion to approve carries. Thank you. 6B2, item 20-2081, Buchanan Estates, section uh, 8, it looks like, phase 2, reapproval of 46 lots on 22.45 acres, zoned RM, located along Ronstadt Drive, Jones Construction Company is the applicant. Doug? Yes, sir, thank you. Uh, this final plat was also approved by the Planning Commission back in September of 2020. Uh, it's been over a year for this one as well, so a reapproval is needed for this. Uh, we did identify a few tweaks that needed to be made. Uh, those have been done. Really, the only outstanding comment is they just need to make sure to show the fire hydrant locations before the final plat's recorded, which is uh, a fairly typical comment that we see. So beyond that, this plat's in good order. Doug? Mr. Chairman, I move for the approval. Second. We have a motion and a second to reapprove item 20-2081, Buchanan Estates, Section 8, Phase 2. All those in favor of the motion to approve, please say aye. Aye. Any opposition? Motion to approve carries. Thank you. 6B3. 21-2065, Eddington Acres, four lots on 5.48 acres, zoned RM, located along Shelbyville Pike. Uh, Tucson Eddington is the applicant. Doug? Yes, sir, thank you. Uh, the applicant's proposing to split the property into four separate lots. Uh, the original plat was actually submitted as a preliminary plan, it was actually submitted a couple months back. After reviewing the plat, that they are the plan they submitted, uh, we looked at it and said, well, this really doesn't need to be a preliminary plan. They weren't really extending utilities or anything like that. So this was really more appropriately uh, submitted as a final plat. So we talked with the uh, applicant and the sur applicant surveyor about better ways to uh, possibly arrange their lots. The original design would have required several waivers from the Planning Commission. What they've come up with now uh, doesn't require any waivers. All the lots are within 500, I'm sorry, 1,000 feet of a uh, hydrant. Uh, there's no off-site soils. There's no private easements that need to be worried about. Every lot has uh, road frontage. They are showing a uh, private drive. Uh, now, th actually, that version you have on there, I think that's a little bit of a, of a dated version. They're showing it as Eddington Lane, but it's just going to be a private drive. We recommended they just not give it a, a road name since all the lots are going to have access on the Shelbyville Highway anyway. It would just make it more confusing to do it that way. But uh, most of our comments have been addressed. There are a couple just uh, little tweaks that do need to be made. They need to add an updated note to the plat stating that a, drive, a TDOT driveway permit is going to be required. They do need to show driveway culvert size and materials along the access drive right there in the front. And lots one and two may need to be marked as critical. That's something that we'll look at before recording uh, just due to the uh, amount of water drainage that runs through there. Nothing that needs to, we think that needs to uh, hold up any approval for this. That's, that's something we can handle on a staff level. But uh, beyond that, our comments have been addressed and we'd be happy to answer any questions. Staff's recommendation? We recommend approve based on those comments. Very good. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve with the additional of staff comments. Thank you, David. 
We have a motion and a second to approve 21-2065 Eddington Acres. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor of the motion to approve, please say aye. Aye. Any opposition? Motion to approve carries, thank you. Item 6B4, 21-2073, Watson Property, Lot 1. One lot on three acres zoned RL located along 12 Corners Road. Lloyd and Linda Watson are the applicants. This includes a waiver for off-site soil and possible fire hydrant waiver. Doug? Yes, sir, thank you. Uh, in regard to the fire hydrant waiver, that's not gonna be necessary after all. Uh, they can support a hydrant out there, so that won't be uh, something we need to worry about. But the applicant is proposing to split about three acres from the existing 10 acre track. Uh, the new lot, which is lot one, will contain the existing house and some accessory structures. The remaining property being l uh, larger than five acres doesn't have to be included as a lot, uh, but they are showing the uh, requisite 50 foot uh, frontage along 12 Corners Road. Uh, most of our, pretty much all of our comments have been addressed. The only outstanding one, as you alluded to in your introduction, is the uh, existing septic system for lot one is actually going to be off site. So they are asking for a waiver for an easement to that provision. Uh, beyond that, this plat is in good order. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve subject to all the staff comments. Thank you, Craig. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve Watson Property Lot 1, item number 21-2073. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor of that motion to approve, please say aye. Aye. Any opposition? That motion to approve carries, thank you. Item 6B5, 21-2079, Butler Cemetery. One lot on 1.44 acres, zoned RM, located along Woodbury Pike. Sandra Drake, Drake and Carolyn Brandon are the applicants. This includes a waiver for the creation of an unbuildable lot, Doug. Yes, sir, thank you. Uh, as you stated, the applicant would like to create a one lot subdivision around an existing cemetery on the property. Uh, there is an access easement being shown on the plat. Mike's bringing it up there. You can see the, the, the little carve out there where that existing cemetery is. Uh, there is no construction or expansion of the cemetery expected with this division. Uh, since no development is expected, the applicants have not done any soil analysis and they are asking for a waiver from the Planning Commission for an unbuildable lot. Uh, quite frankly, our comments have been addressed beyond the non buildable lot issue for the waiver. Other than that, this plat's in good order. So I'd be happy to answer any questions. And I do believe there's someone present if there's questions of, of him as well. Thank you, Doug. Mr. Chairman, um, Doug, if this develops in the future, being the size of the surrounding property, ha what happens to that property? I know it's a, it's a unbuildable lot and it's platted on its own. Does that get tied into the subdivision or have certain easements or things around it uh, well, the and, lot, and maintenance of that? Yeah, you're talking the remaining property around yes. it? It would yes. just, yeah, it would just be under separate ownership. Whoever owns it would be the one maintaining it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve with staff comments. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve item 21-2079, Butler Cemetery. Other questions? All those in favor of that motion to approve, please say aye. Is there any opposition? Motion to approve carries, thank you. Item 6B6, 21-2080, 4639 Wayside Road Subdivision, three lots on six plus acres on RM located along Wayside Road. Stan Beach and Scott Young are the applicants. Includes a possible fire hydrant waiver. Doug? Yes, sir, thank you. Uh, when we wrote these comments originally, we were still waiting to hear back on the fire hydrant request. Uh, fire hydrant can be supported, so the waiver for the fire hydrant will not be necessary on this particular plat. Uh, they are proposing to split the property into three lots. Uh, lot one will contain the existing house and some accessory structures, and lots two and three will be for new single family homes. Uh, our comments, really the only comment we had outstanding was just waiting to hear from the, um, uh, the applicant on the fire hydrant availability. Uh, they do, again, have found out that that can be supported. So uh, that will just have to be shown on the plat prior to recording. With that, uh, our comments are addressed. Very good. So if it's approved with staff comments, the fire hydrant would have to be put in. Yes. Very good.
Chairman, I make a motion to approve with staff comments. David. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve 21-2080 4639 Wayside Road Subdivision. Other questions or comments? All those in favor of the motion to approve, please say aye. Aye. Any opposition? Motion to approve carries, thank you. Item 6B7, 21-2081, Walnut Down, Section 2, 16 lots on 6.87 acres zoned RM, located along Rhonda Drive, Stewart Springs is the applicant, Doug. Yes, sir, thank you. Now, the preliminary plan for this development was approved uh, by the Planning Commission back in November of 2016. Uh, this will be the final section of this particular subdivision and does conform to our preliminary plan approval. Uh, most of our comments have been addressed. Uh, there was one thing we did want to uh, bring up regarding this plat, and it has to do with an area, and Mike will bring up the plat here in just a second, uh, it has to do with an area to the, uh, I guess, the rear, I guess that'd be the western part of the property, looking at it. When this plat's recorded, that uh, remaining area in the back will become landlocked. And yeah, Mike's highlighting it right there. Uh, the, the eventual plan is to combine that with the uh, area with uh, Lewis Downs Section 6, which is adjacent directly to the south. Uh, until that time, however, if this plat is recorded, they'll need to put an access easement or something into it so that it has access to the uh, remaining property and that there'll be a way to get to it since there's not a right of way that, that butts into it. Uh, that's a fairly easy thing to do. Uh, but uh, I just wanted to make sure that any approval would be contingent upon that. So I'll be happy to answer any questions. Very good. Questions for staff? Hey, Doug, when it, when it goes back, does that access easement go away? If, if it can. It doesn't necessarily have to, but uh, that would make the most sense whenever they actually do the, the next plat that combines that they can just abandon that because it wouldn't be necessary after that. I make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve item 21-2081 Walnut Downs section 2. Other questions or comments? All those in favor of the motion to approve please say aye. aye. Any opposition? Motion to approve carries. Thank you. <clears throat> Item 6B8, 21-2082, James F. Beatty, six lots on 12 plus acres on RM located along Dilton Mankin Road. James Franklin Beatty is the applicant, Doug. Yes, sir, thank you. Uh, the applicant is proposing to split this property into six separate tracks. Uh, you can see they're all fairly uh, long and, and varying in size, anywhere from three to four acres to about a little over a half an acre in size. Uh, a consent to drain onto the adjacent property has been secured by the applicant for any increased runoff that may result from this development. Uh, there are no waivers required for this. The plat does appear to be in good order. Uh, we would like them, however, to update the uh, minimum floor and minimum pad elevation note to say that lots one through six would require elevation certificates to meet FEMA and county flood requirements if the building is constructed within or adjacent to a FEMA flood zone, the AE flood zone. You can see on the back of the property there are some areas that are impacted by the 100-year flood. There's plenty of area on these lots to uh, construct buildings outside of the floodplain, but in the event that they did build something back there, we just want to make sure that note's on the plat, that they're aware that that would have to be built to uh, county standards and minimum floor pad elevations to meet FEMA requirements. So beyond that, this plat's in good order. A question uh, really to Mike and Doug. What does a consent to drain, uh, talk to me about how that works. Well, it's um, essentially you're turning a, a farm field, adding some impervious area to it, and running a, possibly running more water onto the adjacent property. However, uh, on average, uh, these lots are all, if we took an average, they're about two acres and above. So they are uh, considered large lots and don't impact the surrounding properties as much but we just wanted to have that um, evaluated as well, uh, that you know, they will be running more uh, 
they possibly could be running more uh, runoff to the adjacent property. However, um, if you look at it, the adjacent property is, if I can turn my soils layer on, is mostly Ruellen, I think, soil. Yeah, Ruellen soil, which is really hydric wet soil. Uh, this is where the development's happening here, and it's got a lot of good Cumberland soil. Um, but I don't see this one developing without a lot of work being done to it and maybe some possible wetlands mitigation. Um, so we just thought, you know, we're not doing any stormwater ponds or anything like that. Uh, so we just asked them to obtain a consent to drain as well. That's a, a long answer to say uh, it's, you possibly could be running more water onto the neighbor. Okay, so I guess from a legal standpoint, if I'm, if I'm interested in buying lot number, pick a number, number four, do I know in advance that some of the neighbor's stormwater may be going across my property and I'm and I'm not supposed to dam that up or do improvements on let me turn on the contours for you essentially this is higher ground than the adjacent property and it's all running off towards the adjacent property this way water runs always perpendicular to the contours so it's running to the northeast and you can see where the farmers in the past have cut these swales it's really flat across here and to help the drainage on on their their field uh, but this area is sitting up a lot higher uh, and the water will be running almost directly onto these adjacent properties so it won't be coming essentially maybe uh, a little bit around here but n these other lots it's essentially running uh, to the northeast to this adjacent property Okay, it, it, that didn't really answer my question. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I guess I guess my concern is, if if I'm a potential buyer of a lot. Okay, let me pull that back up. Okay. Do I know in advance? Is there is there some terms that the realtor or the owner of this property is supposed to divulge to me that there is a, a consent to drain certificate out there somewhere? That consent, the the uh, design engineer is here, he can fill it in, but the consent to drain is on the adjacent property, not across each other properties. Oh, okay. Well, I, okay. I assume those little arrows that were these, going across. These are flow arrows from the soils map. This is the way the water cuts through. The, the soil scientist said, hey, this is the, wa the, wa the way the water crosses the property here. Okay. So I, I had it in my mind if I bought lot four that I, I I potentially water from lot three if it's flowing that direction is going to cross my lot four and water on my lot four may cross over into lot five but you're telling me that's not the case no it will it, it it'll flow this way so each each builder will be required to build a drainage plan that directs water away from the house and the water will continue to flow downhill and onto the adjacent property and okay. that's where we ask them for consent to drain we're we're adding more impervious areas to this farm and so we potentially could be creating more runoff so we ask them to to say uh, ask the neighbor say hey we might be running more water onto you are you okay with it and he said yes and that was the consent to drain. It's, it's already going that way. We are, we're not changing the, the way the water's flowing. It, I'm sorry, I'm, uh, I'm not following you then. Well, maybe, I, I don't know, maybe I've just totally misunderstood the, the concept. I think I'm gonna ask this question to kind of follow up what Mike is saying. Lot six cannot build a blockage for the runoff of the other five lots. No, no. So whoever gets lot six, they've got to consent for the water from all the other five to come across no, the, them. The consent, the consent to drain. No, was well, they just can't build anything that will will impede the water. Yes. That's coming off the others. Yes, sir. Right. So, when when the builder of lot six comes in, he'll most likely have to build up front here to preserve all the septic soils for this 
for this lot to support a septic system. So the water will have to go away from the house, around the house, and likewise on five, they'll probably build in, in this area, the water will go around. They'll build up a little bit just to direct the water away, but it'll still continue to go the way it's always gone to the northeast. But we just asked them, said, hey, um, we're creating six lots, which is larger than a minor subdivision. We didn't think it was worthwhile to uh, design a detention pond and have a homeowners association come in and say, hey, we're gonna maintain this pond, direct all the water to it. Uh, we just asked them to talk to the neighbor and say, hey, we're potentially could be running more water. These are large lots, you know, uh, if you fact average them all in, they're about two acres in size each one. So um, we're not really impacting the adjacent property, but we just thought as, as you know, consideration because we're creating six new lots with houses, driveways, sidewalks, whatever, patios that could potentially run more water off onto the neighbor. Uh, we don't think it will, but we just asked them to, to go that extra step and ask for a consent to drain. Mr. Chairman, I have a question for Mike. Yes, Rhonda. On the consent to drain, is does that have the same sort of legal binding effect as a drainage easement? Because what happens if that adjacent property sells and that new owner doesn't want to give consent? So is that binding? Yeah, Matt's going to come up. He's he's the uh, one that talked to the neighbor, so he probably has more information. Matt Taylor from SEC here in town. And yes, ma'am, it's going to get recorded, so it will go with the land. It'd be part of that um, property's title from here on. And so it, we probably won't record it until we record this plaque because there's not the necessity there until we record the plat. But uh, it, it would continue to do that. And for the consent to drains used to be a lot more frequent before we introduced the water quality requirements. Um, what, 10 years ago or so. And so uh, that is, it's not necessarily a new um, method, but it is a, uh, um, uh, we don't use it quite as frequently as we used to. I'll be happy to answer any more questions. Matt, uh, did, is the approval um, in hand? Yes, sir, I have the signed form at my office. Thank you. And I, me and Mr. Uh, I cannot remember the gentleman's name off the top of my head. We had a conversation. I was, you know, just very upfront with him. We've actually talked a couple times before he even bought this property because I think he bought this from the Beatys, whose land this is that we're subdividing. So, Matt, let me ask you the same question because help me help me understand. It will water is and maybe is this why you have the consent to drain? Will water run from left to right, from lot one to two, two to three, three to four, et cetera? That's the general direction, uh, yes. A surface flow, right? That's what you're anticipating. Yes, sir. So again, if, if, I'm, if I'm new to the area and I wanna buy lot four, and man, I wanna fence both sides or I wanna build up the land and put a bunch of barns and stuff, mm -hmm. how do I know as a new owner that I can't I mean, you're basically telling me there's going to be restrictions on what I could do with my property elevation, because then if I do something, I'm going to maybe create a dam to keep water from the guy in lot three that won't be able to pass through my lot four. And so what I would say is we have that instance in every subdivision that we do. Matter of fact, the subdivision regulations address that there's a, uh, like, I think it's a maximum of five lots that water can go across side to side before you have to introduce it to a system. Um, and so this actually complies with that 100%. And so this this is not a new concept. The consent decree is, uh, or not the consent decree, the consent to drain, I think is probably where it's getting confusing it, it doesn't matter if you're on a residential subdivision with smaller lots like you are to the west right here or if you're on 100 acres you have to know you cannot dam up water coming on to you that's just you if it's coming that way now you have to continue to allow it um, and so uh, it is that way I don't want to say that's common sense or or what the, what that best term is but um, uh, outside of putting a note on the plat to say you cannot dam up water, 
which we never do. And so I think that's just part of the building process. If water's coming onto you, you have to handle it and manage it around your site. You can't just dam it up. Right. The consent to drain was just an extra step that I asked for because this is six lots. You know, typically if it's like three or fewer lots, it's a minor thing there. And these are large lots. It's not a big deal. You're not impacting the neighbors that much, but six lots is kind of getting on the larger size. So we ask them to, to go that extra step to receive the, you know, know that you could potentially be getting more water coming your way. But each lot, there's a note on here that says it's the builder's responsibility to create a drainage plan when he constructs the house that does not pond water near the house or adjacent to it. And likewise, what Matt was saying that um, it's a riparian law that you're not allowed to run more water onto your neighbor or take water away from your neighbor, block it, dam it up, um, that's already coming that way. So we just thought uh, the consent to drain on the neighboring property, the big parcel to the northeast, is what we asked for. It's, and, and it shouldn't impact the, the, lot, it's the, the six lots themselves. Consent to drain, like you said, it rarely comes up to us right so I, uh, I needed some clarification and I appreciate both of you saying yes, sir. so in a bigger subdivision we're gonna have stormwater networks stormwater ponds other features to control the stormwater runoff and this is kind of getting on the edge of you know being a, a decent sized subdivision so we thought it just an extra step to make sure we're okay But all in all, it's got great soil on the property itself. Um, you know, it will help the infiltration. These are large lots, uh, two acres and above. We consider that not to be that big of an impact on these smaller lots that we're creating in these larger subdivisions today. I'll make a motion to approve subject to staff comments. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve item 21-2082 for James F. Beatty. Other questions or comments? All those in favor of that motion to approve, please say aye. Aye. Opposition? Motion to approve carries. Thank you. Item 6B9, 21-2083, High Ship Road, Eight lots on 10.48 acres zoned RM located along High Ship Road. Mark Rowland is the applicant. Doug? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, as you stated, the applicant's proposing to split this property into eight separate lots. Uh, the lots will be divided. Uh, they're about one and one and a half acres each in size. They're pretty uniform. Uh, the remaining property will be divided in two separate tracks, each one being more than five acres in size. So they're not technically part of the plat, but you can see them uh, on there. Uh, staff has asked a surveyor to verify each lot would be within a thousand feet from an existing hydrant. Uh, they are showing a uh, installation of a new hydrant on there to uh, help with that, so no waiver is required uh, in that regard. Our plat, and as far as our comments are concerned, uh, this plat's in pretty good shape. Uh, we will uh, want the applicant and the design engineer to speak with our assistant county engineer, Sheila Huffmeyer, to discuss some alternatives uh, to the rain garden bioretention ponds option for each lot. There may be some other methods that they could use that might be a little more appropriate and easier to implement on these lots. But uh, as far as our comments are concerned, beyond that, this, this plat's in pretty good order. We're happy to answer any questions. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve it. Do I, Doug, do I need to be subject to them making those meetings that you yes. just talked about? Yes, yeah, subject to staff comments should be appropriate. Yeah. Thank you. We have a motion to approve. Second. And a second. Any other comments? Any other questions? I have a motion and a second to approve 21-2083 High Ship Road. All those in favor of that motion to approve, please say aye. Aye. Any opposition? Motion to approve carries. Thank you. Item 6A10, 21-2084, Creekside Estates, Section 2, Phase 1, 29 lots on 22.98 acres, zone PUD, located along shallow waterway. 
Black Diamond Construction is the applicant. Doug? Yes, sir, thank you. Uh, the preliminary plan for this development was approved by the Planning Commission in July of last year. Uh, this layout does appear to conform to the layout that was approved under the preliminary plan as well as their plan development pattern book. Uh, most of our comments have been addressed on this particular plat. Uh, one question we still had, and this is similar to what we were talking about with the uh, Walnut Downs development. If they record this plat, uh, a portion of this property is going to be landlocked. Uh, they've remedied that by putting a 50-foot access easement in there. Uh, it's not the most realistic way that you could get to the property, but the plan is to combine that with adjacent property. So when that happens, that easement won't be necessary anyway. So uh, with that, uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions. The plat itself appears to be in good order. Thank you, Doug. Mr. Chairman, move for approval with staff comments. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve 21-2084 Creekside Estate Section 2 Phase 1. Other questions or comments? All those in favor of that motion to approve, please say aye. Aye. Any opposition? Motion to approve carries. Thank you. Item 6C, we have two items that are submitted for site plan approval. 6C1, item number 21-3023, West Fork Village Gas Station, construction of 5,000 square feet of general retail space for convenience market and fuel canopy on six acres, zoned RC Rural Center, located at the intersection of Veterans Parkway and Barfield Road. Sharig Patel is the applicant. Doug? Yes, sir, thank you. Uh, as you stated, the applicant is proposing to construct a gas station convenience market on this property. Uh, there are future lots and building pads shown on the overall plan, but they're not part of this particular site plan approval. Uh, you can also see that they're kind of marking out just generally where the future uh, property lines will be located. That's something that, uh, of course, that they'll have to uh, do a final plat for. Uh, that's also gonna make uh, a difference as far as how much buffering and everything on the site that they'll have to do just because of the fact that if they're completely surrounded by like zoning there won't be any buffering they still will have to do uh, you know interior landscaping as far as your parking areas and whatnot are required but uh, this gives you an idea of how they're they're looking to uh, subdivide out the property uh, they are also proposing traffic improvements along both Barfield Road and Veterans Parkway uh, you can see that they're proposing a, a right turn lane into the site off of Veterans Parkway. Veterans Parkway, of course, is a five-lane road uh, with center turn lane. Uh, Barfield Road, they are proposing to extend the left turn lane. There is a small left turn lane going on from Barfield Road onto, like I said, be eastbound Veterans Parkway, uh, but they are proposing to extend that both into the uh, development itself and then a little beyond that, as Mike is showing on the plan. Uh, a couple things, and then Mike, I know, has some comments he wants to discuss. Uh, the, as far as the road widening on Barfield Road, uh, they are showing right now a, a two-foot shoulder. They would either need to do curb and gutter or do a four-foot shoulder along Barfield Road as part of those road improvements uh, that they are proposing. So that's something that, uh, you know, of course, you know, before permits are issued or anything, we can make sure that uh, is shown on the plan. Uh, that's, Mike, I know you've had some other comments you wanted to address, so I'll go ahead and turn it over to you for that. Just at the, uh, just clarification, uh, and I'll go back to the plans, um, and it's just a minor thing. They're showing areas, uh, uh, preservation areas around their soils area, and also trees that they, I believe they're trying to save, uh, but they're not lining up with, the, the landscaping plan and the site plan are not jiving of what they're trying to, uh, preserve so um, but I would ask that there uh, and I, we probably need to work this out is there's a lot of these trees right here restrict the the view and I'll try to pull it up for you uh, even though this is a traffic uh, signal intersection it's traffic controlled you always want to have good sight distance um, looking at at either side um, but I'll pull up let's see I'll show you. Yep. 
Bear with me just a second. As you're coming down Barfield Road, like I said, it is a stopped uh, traffic control intersection with the traffic signal, but they're showing to preserve in a lot of these trees in this area, in this corner. Um, it just makes better sense to me to maybe cut these trees off and open that area up for better sight distance at this intersection. Um, I would assume the gas station would want better visibility from the road as well. Uh, but this, these are areas that they've got um, their septic system, their future septic systems will be going into. So they don't want to you know, push the trees over and destroy the septic system. So they'll have to get an arborist and cut them off and, and uh, uh, you know, clear, clean this up. So that's the only thing I, I just, we just need to coordinate with their landscape architect about that and their design engineer about this uh, site triangles at these intersections. Um, and Doug mentioned the um, urban gutter versus the four foot uh, shoulders, if I can. So back up in, this is Martha's Haven here. There's an extremely wide um, right of way on their side that was granted, but it kind of narrows down in this area. So to put the three lanes in, four foot shoulders on each side and, and ditch section, you're gonna need a lot of room. So they might have to come back with curb and gutter to a certain distance until the right of way wides out when they can put ditches in or something like that. So they might have a hybrid system. Right now, they're just showing two foot shoulders on each side to make everything work within the current right of way. So, but our standard is four foot shoulders on each side. So whatever they do is gonna be a, a vast improvement. You can see there's maybe enough room to get one car uh, in this turn lane. So that will help greatly. Uh, any improvements in the uh, Veterans Parkway, even though it's outside the city of Murfreesboro, this is a city of Murfreesboro road and it's um, governed under what's called the Southwest Loop Agreement where the city takes care of veterans parkway uh, even though it's outside of the city um, the traffic signals and everything will need to be coordinated any turn lanes anything any work inside the veterans parkway will need to be uh, coordinated with the city um, improvements on barfield will come through us Mike, there are two homes that are that border this piece of property, I believe. Uh, sure. The landscaping buffering, what, what what will be required there? Well, if whenever they develop those portions of the site, uh, that's where the buffering will take. Uh, what we be more, more something we'll look at. That's kind of what I was alluding to a little earlier when I said if if they don't create a, a lot out of this particular development they're looking at now, they're gonna have to do the perimeter landscaping. If they do final plat and they show the interior property lines and record those, they'll show landscaping from the interior standpoint, but the property immediately adjacent to them would still be zoned real center like the rest of the site. So they wouldn't have to do any perimeter buffering. Those future building pads right there that Mike uh, is, is showing right there on the plan, Whenever we see plans for those, uh, those will that's when we'll start hitting them with the uh, requirements for the uh, perimeter landscaping and buffering. Doug, you said they'd have to get arbors to come and remove those trees. Well, somebody that's not going to, those trees are right where the soil site is located for that lot. I think what Mike was getting at is if you just had someone come in there and just bulldoze them down, that would disturb all that land there, and then they wouldn't be able to use it for their septic yeah. system. Uh, yeah, so, I yeah. understand it, but 
I, I can take chainsaw and have him down in about five minutes, so you wouldn't have to hire. You're not saying they got to hire. Are, so. are you offering? Or huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> I can have you. I can have him down in a minute. I, just don't, I don't have to hire an arborist. Right. Okay. Right. Just they somebody that's it. going to preserve the soils is yeah. is what we're looking for. And just uh, I'm just looking for a better site triangle at this intersection. I agree with you. I, I agree that they, they need to go because you go down 231, down Church Street, you go by Kroger's, all those places right there, and they got all those trees out in front of them, which the city is required to do, which are nice and they're pretty, until you start to pull out on Church Street. Right. And they're right. blind. So typically, per ASTO standards, if this were not a uh, traffic signal intersection, we would have to have a vastly larger uh, you know, this would still be a stop condition, say they had a stop sign on Barfield before you got into Veterans. You would have a, a wide site triangle requirement per ASTO standards. When you have a traffic signal that stops and controls the flow of traffic, that gets dramatically reduced. But still, you know, I'm, I'm a Murphy's Law advocate. You know, if something bad will happen, uh, we need to make any improvement and, uh, and allocation for that we can. So uh, it just my thought is that these needs to be cleaned up and cleared out. There, There is a high volume of vehicles on Barfield Road that still use that between New Salem Highway and Veterans Parkway. And so really this is opportunity to make this intersection correct geometrically. And I agree with you, the sight distance is constrained there. The left turn lane actually needs the stop bar staggered back yes. behind because it's difficult to turn. I actually live off Barfield Road and there have been, because of the development, just dump trucks alone trying to make that turn is very constrained and very tight right. just for a dump truck. And they're showing a turning template for semis and I just don't see that being achievable unless it's paid really close attention to the lane widths, the shoulders, the off tracking and, and things associated with that like you're talking about. So I think there really needs, we need to take the opportunity to get this one right. And I don't see the volumes decreasing anytime soon mm -hmm. through there. No. They are, like Douglas said, if I can, I'm a little bit confused. Um, the, the recommendation is to remove those trees. Yes, sir. Uh, if this was approved with staff comments, would that be a requirement? Yes, before the yep, that was one of the comments we had. Meeting. But, yeah. Did you hear that, Jim? I want one of those trees. So, but the, but the turn lanes will be a vast improvement to this intersection and turning movements into the site coming south on Barfield Road, you'll be able to take a, make a left turn there and, and allow traffic to flow on down to the intersection and not impede the traffic. And um, likewise, they're adding a turn lane on veterans, decelerating right turn lane where you can come in and just turn in here quickly. The access to Veterans Parkway to the private access, is that about 300 plus feet away? I've, I tried to find the dimensions on there. Of course, the f further away, the better uh, the access that's yes. proposed. Um, it would be nice to have it at the furthest end of the development, but I understand that it's more centralized where it's proposed. Right, right. Um, yeah, and we, we will verify that. Here it is on C 2.3. Are. Got 75 feet of storage and don't see a dimension for 375. Oh, 375 yeah. foot taper. And they'll have to adjust with the construction of the turn lanes. They'll have, to, you've got inlets already on the curb line right now, so they'll have to adjust those back uh, to make that turn lane work. But like I said, that'll all be coordinated through the city of Murfreesboro. So they'll have a, a shared uh, garbage um, trash enclosure here. Uh, this is what's proposed right now with the fuel canopy here. 
I think this might be a restaurant, might be retail, something here they're showing a potential drive through line here, and then two more commercial buildings back here. And as Doug had mentioned, they got the opportunity to uh, subdivide the property. Each one will have its own uh, conventional septic system to support the building. Mr. Chairman, Lee, uh, Lee speaks wisely as a resident there on Barfield. This, this is my current district. I live very close to that intersection. Um, there are two big subdivisions currently under uh, construction, or at least they're clearing the sites now, just within a quarter to a half a mile down the street on Veterans. Barfield is the main access that everybody uses to get to Highway 99 and then on to 24. So yeah, the, the traffic on Barfield is continuing to get uh, heavy. That's why we put that light in there in my first term as commissioner, uh, which was, uh, I think that light's only about four or five years old and it was there because it was warranted because of a lot of accidents that happened on Barfield. Barfield's still a dangerous road uh, with a lot of curves, particularly at high speeds, which people break the law. And those trees that are there on that corner, I mean, I'm, I'm a tree lover, but these are just old raggedy trees. There's no need for them to stay. I agree with Mike that the, from a site and safety standpoint, those trees need to go. So if you're looking for a motion, I would like to make a motion to approve subject to staff comments, which would I believe include the uh, widening, the extra widening of Barfield, which would eliminate the trees. I have a motion and a second to approve 21-3023 West Fork Village Gas Station. Other questions or comments? I think the only thing I would add, if I, could, if I may, is to, if someone hasn't done a recent count there, just to see if that distribution of right turns and, and straight or through traffic is accurate enough that if we need to include any improvements there as well. Yes, and that was in the traffic study to do some tinkering with the, the signal, oh, okay. the timing of the movements. Okay, thank you. This, this motion and second would cover that question? Sir. Very good, you okay? Other questions or comments? Well, I'm gonna make a comment. We're fixing to put gas trucks on Barfield Road because they're gonna get off the interstate on 99. They're not gonna necessarily come down Chevable Highway or South Church and turn on Veterans and come into this. They're gonna leave or come or go and go Barfield Road. And it's two lane, no shoulder. And if they do take that route, Lee, have you ever seen a tractor trailer on that road? A few. It's been more dump trucks, and it, it's tight. It's constrained. I mean, that road is, is uh, like Commissioner Cush says, it's it's heavily traveled. It's it's. There have been a lot of improvements made over the years. I know the road superintendent has has made a lot of safety improvements there. But just just the nature of the vehicle itself, the off tracking, the road is not designed for the off tracking of a semi. Right. It might. I would not want to meet a semi on some of those curves, and I travel that road several times a week. Other questions or comments? Ready to vote? And we have a motion and a second to approve 21-3023. All those in favor of the motion to approve, please say aye. Aye. Opposition. Motion to approve carries. Thank you. Item 6C2, site plan approval for 21-3024, Apostolic Ark Church, construction of 4,000 400 square feet of community assembly space. This is a church addition and future multi-purpose building on 2.28, 2.2 acres zoned RM located at 299 Baxter Road. The Apostolic Ark 
Incorporated is the applicant, Doug. Yes, sir, thank you. Uh, the applicant is proposing to make an addition to the existing church building for restroom, storage, and a nursery. Uh, the proposed multi-purpose building will be constructed at a future time. Uh, they are also proposing to remove several existing buildings from the property. Uh, we have asked the applicant uh, through their design engineer to uh, combine these properties. As you can see, there is a property line that splits the two. I mean, these are functionally one piece of, of property. Uh, there is an existing property line between them, but uh, that would eliminate any need for any offsite soil easements, et cetera, et cetera. It would just make it a cleaner situation. You can see the property line pretty much splits the, uh, the parking area, as you can see that he's doing. Uh, most of our other comments have been addressed. Uh, there are just a, a couple of things that we did want to talk about here. Uh, one of them has to do with uh, the location of some of those bollards that they have uh, in the uh, parking area toward the, I guess it'd be the side of the building, the left side. They might want to look a little bit more into better positioning of some of those bollards. I'm afraid that a couple of those might, they might have some issues with the parking cars trying to back out of those parking spots, maybe not paying attention. I can see somebody backing out right onto the, uh, yeah, right there, backing out onto the, uh, and hitting one of those. I think those might be a little bit placed a little bit better, but, uh, other than that, uh, they also need to ensure that some of the spot shots on the property, uh, or especially around the addition, are, uh, and Mike, I'll let you, if I'm not uh, explaining this correctly, uh, some additional spot shots just to make sure they're not ponding any water in those areas, uh, essentially. Uh, beyond that, uh, most of our other comments have been addressed, uh, and we'll be happy to answer any questions. As far as the addition and what they're proposing to do in and of itself, uh, real no issue there, just a matter of making sure that this is done uh, properly. So with that, again, we'll be happy to answer any questions. So they're, they're adding on to the front of the building here, and they're gonna have to relocate these two uh, handicapped parking spots farther down here. And it's kind of draining this away. And when they're, and I'll show you what I was talking about. Um, water's kind of flowing this way. And I just thought if this, if they built steps here, it might impede the flow, because it used to flow right across here. Uh, just need some fine tuning of this. They're showing a ramp in this area here. These are the bollards that Doug was talking about. They are kind of sticking out pretty far um, with people backing out that might uh, tend to hit those back into them. So typically you put them next to whatever you're trying to protect, like the building here and the steps. This could stay here, but you might move these in a little bit closer. Um, specifically these on this side, uh, just put them next to the ramp and then have the, the striped aisle around it. But all in all, it's uh, good order. That looks like a good opportunity for flexible delineators instead of concrete or steel bollards maybe something that could be run over but still delineate just okay. a suggestion so, i mean yeah and we'll, we'll explore any other options that might be better yeah, that's fine okay and this might the addition may trigger um sprinklers but uh i'll let the building codes director uh, address that and i'll turn on the utility lines there's a six inch water line across the street and a fire hydrant uh, across the southern parcel right here. So there's water and a hydrant nearby. Chairman, I make a motion to approve preliminary plan or and staff comments included. 
Thank you, David. We have a motion and a second to approve item 21-3024, Apostolic Ark Church. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor of the motion to approve, please say aye. Any opposition? Motion to approve carries. Thank you. Item seven, staff reports. Uh, yes, sir, thank you. Uh, just a, a few things. Uh, we have one thing on the agenda that uh, is actually listed on the agenda. These other items are just uh, more announcements than anything. Uh, something we used to uh, back several years back, I'd say probably at this point, 13, 14 years ago, we used to have a consent agenda policy when we had the old system of our meetings where we had the committees and then the one planning commission meeting per month. Uh, with the increase in the amount of plans and everything that we've seen, of course, we ended up removing that when we went to two planning commission meetings. But uh, when, uh, in considering of late, especially today, when you look at the amount of final plats and things, uh, we were curious to know if perhaps that'd be something you would wish to implement again, uh, would be a, a consent agenda. Now, I've put a draft policy on there, and uh, this was pulled heavily from the city of Murfreesboro's policy. Uh, I wouldn't say exactly word for word. I ended up cutting a lot of things out that I thought were kind of repetitive or just didn't apply to our situation. Uh, but essentially, we would create a consent agenda. This would really be for the Platts and Plains meeting, the meeting we're in now. We wouldn't really have this uh, unless we just had uh, several Platts and Plans for a night meeting, which is, which is very unusual. But you can see what we would put on there would just be preliminary plans, site plans, and final Platts that were in compliance with our regulations. Things we would not include on the consent agenda would be anything that needed to have a public hearing. Again, that would be a rezoning, could be an ordinance amendment, subdivision regulation amendment. Uh, I would add on there also waiver request is probably something we wouldn't want to have on there if a plat required a waiver request. I think that would be appropriate to consider uh, in a regular agenda as opposed to a consent agenda. Uh, nothing that the Planning Commission would have to prepare a recommendation for and you know, kind of like number three there under section three would be a, a catch-all for anything else that might come up that's, that we don't uh, consider on a very regular basis. But we would consider this at the uh, beginning of every meeting, like today, uh, we'd have the call to order our prayer and pledge, the determination of quorum and roll call, uh, approval of the minutes. We'd get into the uh, new business and the first item of, would be considering the consent agenda. We'd say these are the plans that are on there. Uh, we would give the opportunity for anybody who may be in attendance at the meeting or anybody on the planning commission or even staff that said, hey, yeah, we have it on a consent agenda. Something came up last minute. We need to pull this off. So that's kind of how we anticipate this moving forward. And then at that point, that plan would just go back into the, the, the hopper as to where we would normally consider it. So if it was a site plan, we would just consider it during the site plans, final plats with final plats, et cetera. So that just kind of gives a, an overview of what we're proposing. Uh, this would be a, a change to the bylaws, not necessarily a change to the ordinance. So for bylaws, that only requires that I notify you within, I think it's five days, that this is gonna be coming up uh, for consideration at a future planning commission meeting. So if you wanted that, we could have this as soon as our next meeting, which is November the 8th, and then we could start implementing that even in December. So uh, I just wanna kind of open it up for any comments that the commission may have. This is something you'd like us to do or just not worry about or, or what? Well, these 10 been on the consent agenda? Several of them would have. Uh, there was a couple here that did need waivers, so we would have taken those off. Uh, but there were two or three on here we probably would have left off as well. But I would say over half of them probably would have been on consent agenda. Oh. Only thing would we have missed uh, cutting that tree, making the bigger, bigger uh, turn lanes, and all that? Would we have missed that? Well, that one, honestly, that that West Fork, we probably wouldn't have put that on the consent agenda. There were still several things that we wanted to bring up on that in that regard. And, and again, staff would kind of be the first, uh, the first layer as to whether or not this should move onto the consent agenda or not. Uh, with some of those items that we were still unsure about, we would have left that off and just considered it during the, the regular business portion of the meeting. So to answer your question, I don't think you would have missed anything on that one because we wouldn't have put it on there. Following that same train of thought, Doug, if you had put these on and as we looked at them after you emailed them out, and I saw, let's, we did some discussion on the Beatty property. Um, if I had said, I see a problem with this, I, just requested it come off yes and it would have come you off. could absolutely do that and we would just consider it during the normal part of the agenda after that mm -hmm. but 
section two deals with uh, preliminary final and site plans that are in full compliance. Every agenda item like under 6B was final plats. All 10 of those items had staff comments. So we as a planning commission had the opportunity to address those staff comments. If, if uh, several of these had been put on the um, consent agenda, we as a planning commission would not necessarily know about those staff comments. Is that correct? Right, but we would still, if there were, uh, generally what I envision being on a consent agenda is something that we, we, like some of these that we did today, were just a couple of tweaks to a wording of a note or something like that. I don't think that's anything necessarily, we can catch that at staff level. Um, so I wouldn't be uh, adverse to putting something like that on consent agenda. Now some of the discussion like we had on the Beatty plat or with the site plan, where it's a little more involved, uh, I think something like that should be removed on, and just put on the regular agenda. But yeah, just because the commission doesn't uh, necessarily uh, consider every little thing, I think just one blanket uh, blanket approval for a consent agenda, even saying subject to any remaining staff comments or tweaks or something like that, I think that would give us enough cover to, to do something like that. I know what a big help and a time saver a consent agenda has been for the full county commission. Um, I can also remember Craig, you probably can too, going back uh, to when we had a consent agenda in the Planning Commission, uh, but after we went away from committees and, and let the full commission uh, decide uh, on, in two different meetings uh, uh, whether they're rezonings or uh, uh, some type of a uh, plan approval, the uh, consent agenda didn't seem to be uh, uh, serve a useful purpose anymore. Uh, I've got a little heartburn over this, uh, not necessarily that it's not the right thing to do, uh, but just taking tonight for an example, there's a, a huge agenda item, but every one of them created some discussion. Uh, maybe some of that discussion was not necessarily, not necessary, but I'd like um, um, maybe to next, next month uh, or the next time we have especially one of these uh, uh, morning meetings that we look uh, to go ahead with the full agenda, but also have the staff put a consent agenda together for items that would have been on there and let us take a look at that and see what items um, would have been on the consent agenda and for us to discuss it. Can we do something like that? Sure. I mean, we can do that as, as early as the next meeting if you want to. I mean, obviously you're not gonna vote on it, right. Uh, that way, but we could just say, you know, uh, this is your agenda, and then we can discuss in the meeting, had we had a consent agenda, these are the plats and plans we probably would have recommended to be on there, and then go from there. My, my biggest concern uh, would be um, that, you know, we're discussing uh, items that maybe affect neighbors and neighborhoods, and, and uh, I, I just wanna make sure that they're Full consideration is not uh, overlooked by by us as a planning commission. So uh, I, I think it's a really a good idea, but I, I'd like for us to, to proceed carefully with this and look at uh, what a consent agenda might look like at our next couple of meetings. Yeah, we can put that together pretty easily. So without um, without objection, as chairman, I'm going to move forward with that. Uh, Pettis, you have something? I'm, I'm with you, Mr. Chairman. The, the only thing I'm thinking about this, whenever I hear consent agenda, I'm, I think back to the county commission and what we do there. But I know some of these this morning we did move through. We went right on with those. But the reason we did, uh, we heard staff comments. And I think as a... a uh, a planner setting this right here, hearing those staff comments sort of eases my mind of what I'm looking at. Um, I can sit here individually when I receive those by email and go through those and, and go over our agenda and see that. I'll sit there and think, well, really, what is this all about? What 
what, what does this mean, whatever, but usually whenever I hear the staff comments and what's been done, it sort of answers those questions for me. And I say, okay, I understand that, and we move on. And that's a lot of times I think what this whole commission may do is that those answers are given to us. And different things we do pick up on that we do spend a little bit more time dealing with. The only thing about a consent agenda, I think, yeah, those will appear on there, but I'm just wondering later on down the road, whenever I see something is going in, I wonder, hey, did we miss something here or did, did we not see that or whatever? And I, I have a little different feeling about when we're dealing with the, the development of our county out here and the way it is today, of placing some of these things just over here and one swift vote that we've done this. In the county commission, we got to understand that a lot of the things that we place on consent agenda has already gone through two other committees. I mean, I mean, really, as it goes through, it goes through the individual committee, it goes through budget and finance, and then it comes back here, where most of us, in some way or the other, has seen it and has already seen it on television. Uh, through uh, RCTV. So we have seen all of this really before it ever gets to consent agenda. So we've discussed it. I've had people come to me talking about as commissioner, y'all don't ask enough during commission meetings. Well, the thing is I have to explain to them, I said, we have followed this around through two different committees and all of us have listened to it before for a long time. Where a lot of these right here, after they've come back to you, we haven't seen, but you have. And that's the only thing I have concerns about, Mr. Chairman. I, I would uh, actually agree with that, Pettis. The, the final plat approval consent agenda is not as bothersome as anything else because we've already looked at preliminary plans and those kinds of things. And there were several of these items where we really didn't have much discussion. And I think it may be appropriate, but I'd just like for us to proceed with a certain amount of caution just to make sure that we're not overlooking um, uh, some things. As an example, if, if uh, there were some neighbors, uh, when we talked about the gas station, those two lots that were adjacent there, if, if those people had some comment or called in, uh, I would not want something like that on a consent agenda. I'd, I'd really want uh, to be able to know that there were some folks that brought up some objections and these were their objections. So th those, those type of things, I, I think it's appropriate, um, but I also think that uh, we need to uh, kind of move along with a certain amount of caution. And once again, my suggestion is that uh, at our next couple of meetings, you put together a consent agenda, but we'll discuss them and we'll see what it would look like after the meeting and, and make sure that they were appropriate. Does that yeah. sound okay? Yes, sir. That's what we'll do. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, just a couple other quick announcements. Uh, I sent an email out to the uh, commissioners regarding a, uh, the Tennessee American Planning Association chapter, tennis, uh, TAPA, for a training session November the 5th. Uh, that's a four hour training that'll satisfy your training requirements for the year. It's a virtual event. Uh, there's no cost to it. Uh, if you didn't get that link or need me to send it again, if you misplaced it, just let me know. I'll, I'll be happy to get that to you. Uh, I'm not gonna know who signed up for it. So if you, I've already heard from some of you that said you did, but if you do sign up for it, uh, just let me know. I believe it's from eight until noon, something like that, if I remember right. So uh, just uh, to remind you of that. Uh, also, I wanted to uh, just give you a heads up. You should be getting a, a save the date on this. Uh, the uh, comprehensive plan, a joint meeting between the Planning Commission and the County Commission. It looks like we have a, a date. Uh, it looks like it's gonna be November 17th. Uh, it's gonna be an evening meeting. I don't have the exact time uh, off the top of my head, but that should be on the uh, save the date notice you'll be getting from Michael Skipper at GNRC. Uh, that'll be in this room right here. We've already reserved it. That is a Wednesday night. I know that's not the, the best for everybody, but uh, that was about as good as we could do trying to uh, coordinate as many schedules as we were trying to coordinate. So uh, anyway, I just wanted to uh, let you know about that, to be on the lookout for that. What was that date again? Uh, November 17th. 17th? Yes, sir. And finally, uh, I'll turn it over to Mike. I think he has an announcement that he would like to make. Our new person. Yeah. 
Yes, in the audience we have our new engineer in training, Duncan Cox. He's a recent graduate from University of Alabama. Um, to come to work today for the first day. We told him he couldn't root for Bama uh, when he's working here. So, uh, But other than that, we're happy to have him aboard. Uh, definitely need the help. So we're glad to have him here. Duncan Cox. UX, yeah. Welcome aboard. I believe, unless there's anything else, that's all we have. Is that it, Doug? Yes, sir. Thank you. Doug, will you send an email reminder out to everybody again about the training, four-hour training? The one on the 5th? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Good. And, Mr. Chair, one, one last comment on uh, the consent agenda. I, I appreciate the thought, and I'm, I'm in agreement with everybody. I mean, we did have a long agenda today, but, I mean, it's only 10, 15, so we've only been at this in an hour and a half. Uh, my opinion is we're not – we're a well-oiled group, in my opinion. Um, we, we, we all have our strengths and weaknesses, and uh, because of that, we work really well together. Um, we, we did breeze through this pretty fast, but yet I think we did pay uh, close attention to detail and what was important. Uh, and I just think we owe it to every applicant, everybody who pays the fees, whether it takes an hour or three hours. Uh, you know, that's what we get paid the nine dollars and sixty cents for these meetings to, to do. Um, so I'm I'm not here for the speed. I, I just want everybody to have their fair share and their fair chance. So, uh, uh, and I'm sure most of us feel the same way. But. Uh, uh, it's not that we don't trust or distrust staff. I just think we want to be intimately involved in what's going on. So thank you. That's fine. Again, it was just a, a thought that we had, especially knowing that we're getting into November and December and uh, we only have the one meeting. Some of those can get kind of long, especially if we have multiple rezoning applications. It was just a, just a thought, not something we have to do. But we do appreciate the input. Yes, the absolutely. Extra set of eyes, the you know expertise that y'all give us is is very valuable. Anyone have anything else? Our next meeting is scheduled for Monday, November the eighth. That'll be a six p.m. meeting, uh, and I've got on my calendar Monday the twenty second. That's been canceled. Okay. Everybody can mark that off of yeah, their calendar. We only calendar. have, uh, based on our bylaws, we only have the one regular meeting in both November and December due to the holidays. So it'll just be the evening meeting in both November and December. Okay. Very good. Anyone have anything else? Once again, thank you uh, for your participation and your attendance this morning. We are adjourned. Thank you.